on my mama, mama. on my hood. Mm -hmm. I look fly, mm -hmm. I look good. Mm -hmm. Touch my sweat. Mm -hmm. What's up, everybody? It's your girl Bondi Blue, and I am back for Love and Hip Hop New York Reunion Part Motherfucking Two. All right. Now, look, the episode started off where it left off, which is with Yandy jumping up, giving a cue to her big titty sister and some dude off the stage to run up and pull Samantha's hair and hit her from behind. It was all real fucking shady. And I didn't believe for a fucking second that Yandy did not know that that was going to happen. I didn't believe that for a second. So, Yandy gets on stage with Erica and Samantha so they can have a conversation. They put everybody else backstage, you know, so that they can try to resolve the situation. So they start to get into the interview with the kids. So they play this interview with Asim and Lil Mendeecees and, um, and, and all of the, you know, the other babies and just, you know, how much do I love my siblings this much? I love them. And then, you know, it warms everybody's heart. And it's the moment when you look at these three bitches and wonder what the fuck is wrong with y'all. Them kids really love each other. And you mean to tell me y'all can't stop giving a fuck about Mendeecees jailbird dick long enough to resolve this so that them kids can see each other on a daily basis or at least close enough to it? That's really fucking stupid. And I'm not putting it on just Erica and Samantha for being petty i'm putting it on yandy for being a motherfucking liar and for all you people who thought that she wasn't a liar like y'all killing me yandy is tearing up about the kids and samantha is like look i just want to know who came and hit me from behind who came and hit me and you know like i said yandy says she doesn't know but we find out it's yandy's sister so yeah yandy you fucking knew it was gonna happen then they get into the Kimbella situation because this is another situation where Yandy is pulling people's cars to come and fight for her and then she denies it and says that she didn't. It, it, it's really fucking aggravating. So they play this audio, y'all, and this is when shit get good for me, okay? They play this audio of Yandy and Judy, okay? Now, I guess the, the production team was with them, but they weren't rolling cameras, but they were rolling sound. And you can hear Judy pick up the phone talking to Kimbella. And Kimbella is like, yeah, I'm here. Where y'all at? So Yandy told everybody that she didn't know until after the fact that it was Kimbella that was causing all of the hoopla. She fucking lied, okay? It was, she didn't know, okay? It was Kimbella and she didn't know it was Kimbella because she talked to Kimbella before. But she knew that it was rolling, so she told Kimbella she was going to text her. And she wasn't answering her phone and Kimbella had kept calling her. And I'm like, see, that's why right there. She wasn't answering the phone because she knew they was rolling. And if y'all had talked to each other, then that would prove that she was fucking lying about uh, sending you to jump or fight Samantha and Erica. Like, give me a break, y'all. Like, I said this from jump and y'all didn't believe me because y'all want to stand for fucking yin. Well, guess what? The bitch is a liar, okay? She's a liar, like I said. She knew about that shit just like she knew about this shit. Stay trying to act like she's so above some shit, but she's not. She's not above it. When you calling your sister and, and homegirls to fight the baby moms of your kid's siblings, like, come on, bro. That's fucking petty. That's stupid. And that's not in the best interest of anybody's child. But we're going to act like it's for the kids, right? Bitch, whatever. Okay, Samantha says that Yandy, you know, her problem with Yandy is that she wants to be the mother and the father. And she doesn't understand that she has to play her position. And Yandy says that, bitch, you just mad because your baby daddy don't like you. And it's like... Oh my God, Yandy. See, this is what we're talking about, the petty shit. As soon as we expose you and try to get to, like, the meat of this situation, you come back with the petty, the petty bullshit. Like, talking about you, baby, daddy don't like you. That nigga's in jail. Who gives a fuck what he likes, okay? The fucking judicial system don't give a fuck what he likes. I don't know why we should right now. Anyway... Yandy starts talking about protecting the bag and y'all know what that mean that mean that she's trying to protect the money and trying to keep them bitches from getting child support which is all bullshit I mean DC's even said that why are you even worrying about that you never had to worry about that that's never been an issue because I mean DC sold drugs no let me tell you something BMs of drug dealers don't go to court because then they really not gonna get their fucking money because then we're gonna get the IRS involved and then they're gonna start questioning how you made this much money and you ain't pay no taxes on it like what you talking about that's fucking stupid Yandy like it's just it's, it's dumb it's a reason to be pissed off and have beef with these bitches because you mad because he fucked them and was still probably fucking with Erica when y'all was together and there's another baby mama somewhere okay he is not at all the, the stand up I'm gonna be faithful to my 
old lady type dude, but he damn sure gonna put on that disguise for your fucking ass so you can be paying for commissary, bitch, and lawyer's fees. Don't do me. Erica says that, you know, Yandy's mad. You just mad. You see that this is real and you just mad. <laughs> it was funny because in my head, the way Yandy was sitting up there, you really do look like a bitch that's jealous of another bitch because she, you know, everything's real. On her ass is real. Her titties are real. She's really cute. Everything came natural to Erica. That didn't come natural to you, frog lady. Like, I'm just saying, y'all, the hate is there. And then we're not going to act like it's not there. It's fucking there. Erica says that after... Uh, Yandy announced her pregnancy. Mendeecees gifted her with a red Audi with a bolt on the top. And I'm like, that that don't sound wrong either. Okay? I know Mendeecees wants to put it out there like Erica was just some hoe he fucked. But if you look at evidence, paying for the teeth to get done. Like, who does that for a bitch they not with? I don't want to... Paying for more than one vacation, Mendeecees? Get the fuck out of here. We ain't, we ain't that cool, bitch. Nah, you fucking that girl. And you spending money on vacations? What are you talking about, nigga? Y'all was going together. <laughs> like whatever you might have been cheating but y'all was going together y'all was going steady y'all just be fucking around yeah so the bianca drew and sky situation the thing that annoyed me about the thing that annoyed me just be walking next to your the thing that annoyed me about this bianca sky drew situation is that bianca gets up there and, and you know i'm the petty princess and drew was easy prey and didn't nobody really want him and you know this what we do to the bird bitches we throw ones on them you know collectively being twenty dollars in ones like bitch get out of here with that shit the thing that make me mad is that the audience or whoever else is there with the laugh track pop up and clap every time somebody does something stupid or says something stupid or says something loud enough to be heard over the other mics bitch please yes at the end of the day drew is a disrespectful bitch ass nigga that this girl is about to marry and probably have a baby with okay we saw it i'm not about to go through everything that happened because i don't really fucking care bottom line bianca that does not change the fact that you are sitting over there rhinestoned out all on your fucking lonesome bitch do you have a man no you know why because just like drew said you don't know how to move okay don't no man want wife a bitch that's proud of being a hoe i'm just saying like you can say that oh and about juicy coach you, you called your your own man called you a whole on national television bitch your own man called you a whole on national television and it's like yeah that's mad disrespectful and that's between them two and sky saying that she forgave him and all of that made her sound stupid as fuck okay i'm just gonna say that right now but at the end of the day bianca um we don't have any evidence of that okay we never saw her roll up at a hotel talking about pull up on me i ain't they mean we had to fuck i'm in lingerie but pull up on me what bitch what and then you cried and was all in your fucking feelings when he told you he couldn't be friends with you no more and and they get engaged on stage and you talking about oh that's good for them bitch you look like you felt fucking played i don't want to hear that shit you look like you felt played um <laughs> you look like you felt hurt okay okay Anyway, y'all, then we get on Mariah, Major Galore, and Self, and he's talking about they both the first lady of Gwinnin. I'm trying to focus on both of their careers so that they can reach their utmost potential. And then we get into how Mariah was mad that Self didn't tell them about, you know, each other being that they so hungry for this life. They so hungry for this music shit. And you put them in a room together and didn't tell each other about the other bitch. And it's like, Mariah, shut the fuck up. Who cares? This is business, bitch. If if you gonna get mad every time you're gonna be in a room with a bitch you don't know you're gonna be one angry motherfucker i'm gonna need for you to go ahead and get over that but then somehow we get into this beef between cardi hennessy and major galore apparently major and cardi were friends uh working at the strip club and cardi is the one that introduced uh major to self self says he didn't fuck cardi like why would i lie why would i lie didn't you tell me you fuck home girl with a helmet why would i lie and i'm just like why would she lie self you lie all the time you lie all the time self i don't know but either way i didn't understand what the beef was at the time but then all of a sudden hennessy jumps up with that horrible ass dry looking fucking hair and runs her ass across the stage to get at major galore it looked like self might have tried to block her and secure or security blocked i couldn't tell but she still was getting licks in on major galore's fucking head and pulled her hair out uh security got cardi then i saw um mariah and bianca being thrown about i'm like what the fuck are you two bitches doing i don't like the jumping shit 
I don't like the jumping shit. Therefore, Hennessy, sit your ignorant fucking ass down. And Cardi, you going on? My sister is like that. Everybody want to talk about, you know, my sister acting like me. That's how my sister is. And what? Bitch, you sounded fucking stupid. You sounded lame as fuck in that moment. Everybody was quiet. And I'm just sitting up there. What the fuck is she talking about? Who cares? Y'all are acting like two bum bitches that have nothing to lose running across the stage trying to fight a bitch because she said that she said something bad about you stripping. Bitch, you ain't trying to be a stripper no more. So who fucking cares? Who cares? I didn't understand, y'all. I didn't understand. But you know what? I heard Cardi signed a huge deal with Atlantic, so that did not block her blessings. <laughs> okay? And at the end of the day, I rock with Cardi, so I'm happy for, I'm happy for her. But I got to check her and her little sister. Bitch, calm your crazy ass down because you're going to fuck shit up for your sister because she's going to jump up every time your crazy ass jump up. That was retarded, y'all. That didn't make no goddamn sense. Then we get back and Mariah says that she and Major Galore are, are cordial. I'm like, bitch, if you about to watch me get jumped, we ain't cordial no more. Um, then we get on Yandy and Kim Bella's lesbian relationship and why Kim doesn't trust Jewels. And then she starts to go off on a tangent about how if there's ever anything that I feel some type of way about, he does everything to correct how I feel and make me feel secure, okay? No bitch is coming in between what we have. No bitch is coming in between what we have. And I'm like, well, bitch, if that's the case, why you? so pressed all season let me know because <laughs> you was pressed as fuck for somebody that don't care anyway y'all she says she don't trust these hoes and i'm like girl please um just like remy said if you think you can take my man please step up to the plate bitch but if i know me and i know my man that he can't be taken and you just look petty and you just look you know basic just like bianca did <laughs> okay talking about that man was easy prey he didn't give you play he flirted with you but he didn't give you no real play he sidestepped you every time you tried he was like oh bitch sidestep like no then we get on the vacation to Mexico and how all these hoes was dipping in the lady pine and Mariah's talking about she was in a relationship with some girl for three years before she started dating men. I feel like I heard that already. Um, then we get on Yandy and Juju's beef and how, you know, Yandy apologizes because she knows her friend and her friend would never do that. Juju, pull out that book. <laughs> okay, bitch, I'm ready. Here's my book. It's out right now. Get it, okay? And I just wanted to explain to Yandy that, you know, the stories were like a lot of things that we've all went through. But, bitch, it's not just you, okay? You are not the only one who has bitches making pages about their man. I mean, come on, girl. Nobody really knows me, DCs. Everybody knows my man. <laughs> like, I know she wanted to say that. Then we get into Peter, Tara, and Amina. And y'all, this is just, this is like the gift that continues to give because no matter what, even when we think we're getting past it, it always ends up being in the same place, okay? Bottom line, Amina and Peter are still married. Peter is still coming at Tara like he wants to be with her, but he's still fucking Amina and lying about it. Talking about, come on, Tara, do you really want to hear that I'm still fucking her? Do you really want to hear that? Like, what the fuck? And here's the thing that made me mad, y'all. When everybody decides Cardi, Jewels, you know, anybody else on stage decides they want to start Iyanla and Yala Van Zant and Amina about how she needs to just give it up and she needs to just stop fucking with him because, you know, as long as he's with her, she's going to have to think about the fact that he's with her because Tara said no. And it's like... But he keep coming back and fucking her. And I just didn't like that they did Amina like that. Because I feel like this is not all on Amina. Like, she the one fucking Peter and distracting Peter from his love for Tara. Get the fuck out of here. He a grown ass man with 10 plus kids. And he keep going over there fucking her because she's a good lady. He's still married to her because he still wants to keep fucking her. And yeah, I might feel comfortable and feel bad and really love and have this Kendrick, you know, spirit shit with, with Tara. The, it, it ain't bomb enough for him to stop fucking with Amina. It ain't bomb enough for him just to divorce Amina. So everybody telling Amina what the fuck she need to do, need to tell Peter what he need to do, okay? Like, I just didn't like it. I, I didn't like the way it felt like they was ganging up on her. I just... I wasn't a fan of that shit at all. Apparently, Amina is coming out with a book, you guys. And in her book, she talks about how they went to a friend's house for a party the day, like the day before they got uh, married. And basically had sex in a room with Buku, other people who was having sex. They say it's not an orgy because Peter said, I didn't fuck anybody but her. And I'm like, that's all well and good, but that's still kind of orgy, Peter. Um, but yeah, this is what they did. They had, you know, had sex in this room full of people, had an orgy, whatever, went got married, and then he was home by noon the next day to Tara. So Tara has a problem with that. And I'm like, see, bitch, that's how we know you ain't never really over this shit because why is that a surprise to you at this point? 
that's what he was doing the whole time. <laughs> like, if you still mad about it, your feelings still hurt about it, then it's it, it. You obviously still give a fuck. Please, I'm surprised that they not fucking. Okay, Tara and Peter both said that they not fucking. I'm very fucking surprised that they not fucking. And if they not fucking, they about to be fucking. Get out of here with that shit. At the end of it, y'all. Um, Peter and Cisco kind of have a go back and forth, and you know, basically saying that we ain't gonna make up. We gonna catch them streets. And, you know, Peter's like, well, I guess we're going to have to catch them streets. And Cisco, like, nigga, I will kill you. I hope you're not really serious. I will fuck you up. Talking about catching these streets. It was hilarious. Uh, they not about to make up no time soon. And I want they gay relationship to just go ahead and come to fruition and, and show everybody what it's really hitting for. Because all this emotion for no goddamn reason is annoying the hell out of me. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get a chance, but we're going to talk about that Remy My Dust to Nicki Minaj. That shit was for the culture. <laughs> okay, I can't say it up. It was for the culture. Okay, um, yeah, Cardi apologizes to Asia for how she acted. I'm glad that Cardi said something because that was really fucked up. But at the same time, like, how many times we gonna go through this with you? I hope we ain't gonna have to go through this again. Okay, I forgot to mention how much she like having threesome. You know what I'm saying? I threesome all the time. Like, what you talking about? Like, I fuck three bitches all the time. Like, <laughs> that shit was funny too. Remy says, you know, at the end of the day. If you had a problem with somebody, stop fucking with them. Y'all, that's the easy thing to do, except for when you work with people. <laughs> okay? Like on a show. Anyway, you guys, that was, you know, real law, real housewives. Look, that was like, <laughs> look, uh, y'all got so much going on. I just came from the seamstress and I'm got, about to go back to work. They got to hit to take my dress in some more, y'all. Jesus help me. Uh, Mighty Rob was yesterday. I'm tired. I'm sore as fuck. Um, and it's four days to my wedding. So, yeah. <laughs> Holla at your girl. Okay, Love and Hip Hop New York Review Part 2. Hope you enjoyed it. I love you guys. And I'll see you. Oh, my mama. Oh, my